we're in the woods today. Cellbot D, prisoner number, oh no, sorry, wrong one. Uh, please subscribe. Hello. We're on the site of a World War II anti-aircraft position today. And we're going to explore it. You, me and the internet. Let's go. Now, um, the farmer um, doesn't usually like visitors, so uh, just gonna pop in and be polite, you know. It's a big stag. You can tell it says at oof, there's some smaller ones at the doors that have been following it. Yeah. That size of that oof there, that's a big one. It's a big stag, and then little ones. Oh dear. Anti-Aircraft Command was formed on the 1st of April 1939. Initially commanded by General Sir Alan Brooke of the British Army and then Sir Frederick Pyle, who would remain in command until the end of the war. Anti-Aircraft Command was under the operational direction of RAF Fighter Command and as part of the Air Defence of Great Britain during the Luftwaffe's operational offensive. The majority of Anti-Aircraft Command's guns and searchlights were operated by the Territorial Army. Some regular army units joined after they returned from the Dunkirk evacuation in May 1940. Men of the Home Guard were later trained to man and operate the guns, freeing up regular soldiers for other duties. Women from the Auxiliary Territorial Service also were part of the Anti-Aircraft Command, handling ammunition and operating gun directors. The Vickers quick-firing 3.7-inch rifled single-barrel gun, firing high-explosive and shrapnel shells, both fitted with a time fuse with a maximum altitude of 35,000 feet or 11 kilometres, and a rate of fire to 20 rounds per minute was the standardised heavy anti-aircraft gun located at many of the sites all over the United Kingdom during the Second World War. Let's now explore this site to see what remains. Here we are, beginning of the anti-aircraft position. Let's 
still got the original ladder and then the gun would have been in the centre here on this central point let's go inside and there's several rooms like this yeah. Nest. There's a hole there. Looks like it used to have a communication book cable. Then the central gun would have been there, pivoting round. And then these were like ready use lockers for the ammunition. Just never crossed to that one. This one has a lot of shotgun shells in it for some reason. Settings camera up. This is so the uh, old pen left lock. Yeah. Green pen, green. This is very similar to the other one, and I'll put a link, RF Luton's anti-aircraft position, which I'll put a link into now, which is one of my really early videos that I filmed on a GoPro, and it's before Dave used to come with me, but I'll put a link up to that. But it's very overgrown, that one, whereas this one's quite sparse. Yeah. I had to find Somebody's gone to the trouble of asphalting the concrete room. Look at that, that was fairly new bitumen, does that? That does look fairly new, yeah. Yeah, yeah and they're stacking the bricks up, they've been sorting it out. It's in good condition, this one. And can you see the little hooks? Can you see the little hooks on the top for tying camo nets to, to disguise it? The little doorway used to be. They pulled the wood out for some reason. The wood's still in good neck. This will have had a radio or something bolted to it. You can still see the blue paint behind. In good condition, this one. So do we think this was a gun position and the trenches for the cables and there was another gun position sat on these blocks? Quite possibly, yeah. One? I would think so, yeah. Because yeah. they never had sights, lights and the guns in the same place, did they? They always had the guns and the sights. Oh, it's just for searchlights. Do you think? Well, 
Search yeah, lights aren't on them. Search lights weren't as big as the guns, were they? No, they were like. So this is a small a picture of now. Plus you've got a big channel for electric, electric gear yeah. yeah. So search lights in the middle and then the guns around the outside. Yeah, they were like generators somewhere. Yeah, there's some of that somewhere, didn't it? Buffalo girls go down the outside or something. Yeah, it was like M&M. And um, someone like that. A bit off topic, know. sorry. Can we do that? Peanuts in chocolate, I like M&M's. I do, yeah, yeah. I like the peanut ones. The old drain lid. Yeah, this is in remarkable condition. Yeah, like Dave says, the roof's been re refilted. As if they're going to reuse it for something else. I don't really know what. And then we're going to have um, the pens are just like repeats of, of where the guns were. Yeah, there's four. There's four batteries, so they've had four anti-aircraft batteries here, and then two two searchlights, one there, one there. Yeah, I'll put a card up to the anti-aircraft position that I went to a long while back. I'll put a card up for that and uh, check out one of my really early videos. If you've got any comments or things that you want putting in these videos, just uh, put a comment below and uh, I'll see what I can do. I see this sheep out here and scared of Dave lot. That one. You do that one. We haven't been in that one, have we? So yeah, we've got four anti-aircraft positions here. Gun positions. I'll, if I can find a clip, a little video or something, I'll put that up. Yeah, for now, it's just for the sheep. We'll go this way and not scare them. Show the sheep there. Uh, should we have a look in this one and then call it quits? Yeah, if they see us. These ones we didn't cover. Well, I'll just do these then. Yeah. I don't want to scare the sheep though, you see. It's having a lovely day. I can't believe the existing ladder's still here, and it's even been, that's been repainted. So someone's taking care of this. And you can see where the gun used to mount to. These were all scrapped after the war. And these were ready use lockers for the ammunition. And a bit of shelter as well for the people that used to run them. No mattress in here. Not much military wise, other than this wall's been painted white in the past, but there's no markings or graffiti, unfortunately. That would have been a crew room for the gun crew, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then there should be another one over here. These were just the ready use lockers for the ammunition. The ammunition store, yeah. So, do you know what sort of gun they would have had in? There. Metal ones. Metal ones. I'll put a link to the gun. <laughs> She's dead. I'll put a link to the gun down there. Or I'll put it in the description box of what guns they use at these anti-aircraft positions. But they were pretty big. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were big. Bigger than the big thing from Biggington. Yes. Yeah, there's no markings in here. But in each one of these I've noticed that this brick this brick's different, and there's little clips, look. So if anybody knows what happened where this brick was, and these clips, leave a comment below. Please check out our website, alwexploration.co.uk and if you wish to support future trips, check out our Patreon page where you can watch exclusive videos, 
that won't make it to YouTube. Link in the description box. From Dave and myself, Andy, we would like to thank you for watching this video. New content every Tuesday and Thursday, 8pm UK time. Bye bye. Looking over my shoulder, looking back at your door, in my head it goes over and over.